Therapy Chat Podcast, Episode 48. This is the Therapy Chat Podcast. The information shared in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. And now, here's Laura Reagan, LCSWC, with today's episode. In today's podcast, which is episode number eight of the Practice Building series, I'm super excited to have Melvin Varghese, PhD, host of the very popular Top 100 Business podcast, as rated on iTunes, called Selling the Couch. And on Selling the Couch, Melvin talks with experts about business practices to grow a a private practice. And many of the people he speaks with are therapists, so they have built successful private practices, and he helps them teach us about what we need to do so we can build successful private practices too. I've learned a ton from Melvin, and I'm super excited to have him on Therapy Chat today. I know you're going to learn a lot too about how podcasting can be beneficial to therapists. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi, welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm excited to have a special guest Melvin Varghese, PhD, is my podcasting hero, and he's here to talk about his Selling the Couch podcast and how therapists can use podcasting to grow and develop their strengths in private practice. So Melvin, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Laura. I'm, you know, we've gotten to be friends offline and I, uh, this is neat being on the other side of being a podcast guest. Yeah, you get to be in the hot seat now. (laughs) The hot couch, right? (laughs) That's right. And everyone can hear that Melvin's audio quality is so superior. So don't judge me. I just I love listening to your really soothing voice. But your um, your production quality of your podcast is just like, wow. Yeah, I mean, I've, fortunately, I now have someone that, you know, has been able to help me with that. But I think uh, you bring up a good initial point, which is, you know, when I first started podcasting, I just assumed I had to like, buy like a recording studio to start a podcast, you know, right. and like right now, as we're recording this conversation, I'm literally in a home office, I have a laptop. And I have a mic that costs me $60 on Amazon, and it's plugged into my computer, and I'm talking to it. And that's how I do my podcast. Exactly. It's something that's very easy to get started. And so I think that the audience is really going to benefit from hearing from you today. Um, So part of this therapy chat series on therapy practice building, I wanted to be sure to cover podcasting because it's been such an incredible gift to my practice, not only in building clients, but um, just helping me expand as a person and in what I, the reach of what I can offer. So I think we therapists don't typically think about podcasting as a way for us to put ourselves out there. And, and you're the man who not only um, with your Selling the Couch podcast, talk about practice building and your blog, but you have your HealthCasters course, which teaches therapists about podcasting. So how did you get started with podcasting? You know, it's so crazy because uh, I'm naturally an introvert and there's like no logical reason why I should be (laughs) podcasting. Uh, I was like terrified to launch a podcast. But I think early, so I, you know, it's been a little, it's been 14 months now since I launched my podcast. But one thing I I noticed was, you know, probably around two years ago, I discovered podcasts for the first time on my phone. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I can literally search for stuff that I'm interested in and listen to conversations on that specific topic. And And then as I started just, you know, devouring podcast after podcast, I was like, hmm, I wonder if I could do this. And that simple idea is kind of what started everything. Uh, But professionally, I think there's a piece there, too, which is that I was in a group private practice for 
three years, I had just, you know, gotten licensed and immediately went into the group private practice because I knew I wanted to be in private practice. And I thought being part of a group might be a great way to to learn some of those business and marketing skills. But I just kept feeling like, man, I have no idea what to do when it like I know I feel like I know a little bit of what to do as a clinician, right, in the therapy room, but marketing and business and those kind of lessons that are so vital to running a business, I had no idea how to do any of that stuff. So I just started learning it and I started asking my colleagues and they were like, yeah, we don't really learn the stuff either. And so that's where the idea for selling the couch came from. I just thought, what if I could create this awesome resource where I have conversations with people doing amazing things, you know, people uh, from social media experts to marketing experts to successful clinicians talking about the business side of therapy, about how, you know, they get referrals and where they've, what things have worked and what's not worked. And I thought if, you know, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to marketing and trying to do it in kind and honest and ethical ways, of course. And I just thought maybe I could use this platform to share what I had learned instead of just holding it, you know, because I feel like I'm so... I'm so grateful to be in our field. And I just thought we could create this platform where, you know, I could share as much as I had learned. That's great. And you do share so much. I mean, the interviews that you have on Selling the Couch are with such a diverse group of people who have so much different experience in practice building and marketing and business skills in general. And I mean, there's so much information to take in, it could be really overwhelming. So having it all kind of organized just episode by episode is very, um, you know, kind of, it's like biting it off into in small bites so that it's not so overwhelming. And you can yeah. kind of just put all that information together and take what works. Yeah, and absolutely. And I think the nice thing with podcasts are also is that you can go back and listen to it as many times as you want. You know, I almost think of it as like these podcast conversations are almost like mini lessons that, you know, you would normally pay hundreds of dollars for, but you get that, you know, for, you know, free. essentially. Right. Even when you're working with a coach, most of the time you're not recording the conversation. So you take away from it what you get and it's valuable and hopefully you take notes, but with a podcast, that content remains online for you to go back and refer to it anytime you want. And it's easier to share it with other people, which is one of the things that people do a lot with podcasts. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, I think just in general, like any kind of content, whether it's online or offline, if we find it helpful, we're likely to share it, you know, and I think podcasts, the way that they're growing, uh, they make it very easy to share because a lot of people consume podcasts on smartphones, and it's so easy to just share that podcast episode on on social media or whatever it is. It's just it's kind of a natural flow to it. Yeah. So you told us about how you got into podcasting for yourself. What are the benefits that you found with podcasting? You know, I think for me, like, so I guess the piece that I haven't really shared and I and I, is, you know, I, I was in the group practice and I recognized that I didn't have the business and marketing lessons, but I also recognized that this idea of me seeing a client and getting paid and then if I, if I get sick or if the client gets sick, like me not getting paid, I don't, I just didn't know if that was like a long-term sustainable kind of model, you know? And I just realized I think as I started learning more of this business and marketing stuff, this whole world like opened up for me, you know, in terms of all the things that we could do, you know, as, as clinicians from writing eBooks and writing and creating courses and doing all sorts of like online masterminds, whatever it is. Right. And podcasting could really be that medium to get folks there. Right. Um, to, to connect with, to connect with potential people and then to share some of these resources that you're creating on a much larger scale. So I think the way that it's helped me is one, I think it's given me a healthy work life balance. I think that was something that was so important to me because I, I wanted to do like very small things. Like I wanted to be home so that we could like my wife and I could eat dinner together every night, you know, yeah. uh, 
I didn't want to like wake up so early that, you know, we like we didn't have that morning time together. You know, I wanted to have weekends free because we love hiking and being outdoors and spending time with our family. Like I wanted that time back, you know. And so I think one podcasting has allowed me to get that life balance back. Um, I think two, uh, it's helped me to connect with people that I otherwise would have no business connecting with. I mean, these are best-selling authors and, you know, I had somebody on that was, you know, one of the top hundred entrepreneurs under the age of 30, you know, crazy things like that. And I mean, that's the, and I, I know you've seen this, right? Like the power of when you're having a conversation with someone, uh, it's not just having a podcast conversation. You're getting to know them, especially sitting there and asking these questions. And inevitably, it's just like, it's very similar to therapy, right? Like that sense of rapport gets built over time. Yeah. So you're talking about building rapport with the audience, right? Yeah. Well, I think building rapport with the audience um, and also building rapport if you have podcast guests on your podcast as well, right? You get to build that sense of trust. Very true. I've said this to you. I know that um, some of the people I've interviewed on the podcast, first of all, there's no other way that I would have connected with those people. Mm -hmm. And even if I did see them in person somewhere, like at a conference or training, I'm not going to be able to sit and talk to them and ask them everything I'm wondering about their work, like I do when I interview them on the podcast. So it's kind of like being at a dinner party with people you admire so much who have so much to teach and just saying, how do you do this? How do you do that? And, you know, just them answering and, and then get to share it with everyone. Right. That's, that's exactly what it is. And I think like, and I, you know, obviously I think having that life balance, I think one of the benefits that maybe I anticipated kind of anticipated, I don't know. At least uh, maybe we're hoping for. Yeah. Hoping for, I mean, it's, you know, I've had, you know, right now I have definitely, uh, trying to think offhand, at least four to five like different streams of income coming in through my podcast, whether that's courses or I have a, a paid mastermind, you know, I have affiliate income coming in through a couple of different ways. Um, so I think for me, like that financial flexibility has been so helpful because what I noticed right now is Um, so right now I'm taking a little bit of a break from private practice because, you know, just, I wanted to focus on the, the podcast because, you know, the way it was growing, but what I notice is, but I'm still doing testing and assessment at a clinic. So what I notice is I'm just much more present with clients when I'm not worried about where that next income's coming from. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the thing, right? Like podcasting allows you to scale your business, um, mean scale meaning that you don't always have to be in that position of trading time for money. That is a really great point. And I think that's one of the things that really deters people from going into private practice is a fear of, you know, what if I want to take a week off and I won't have any income, you know, and how do I sort of sit with the uncertainty of not receiving a regular paycheck every two weeks like I did in my job? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's the thing. I, I, and I, you know, it's so funny because I think I used to like read these like blogs, like financial blogs and, you know, people are like, I made money in my sleep. And I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I was like, it doesn't really happen. And, but that's the thing, like this online space, I think once we began to expand what it means to be a clinician and start to redefine our idea of what it means to be a private practitioner, especially in this online space, the world just gets opened up like no other. It really does. And, you know, we always talk about how um, Facebook and social media and online connection and communication is replacing in-person communication and connection and how, you know, people talk about that as a negative about the internet, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, But when you, for one, podcasting helps you connect to the people you interview, which you and I met online through Mm -hmm. another person. And then I was on your podcast, which made me feel like, 
we were becoming friends. And then we've kept in touch throughout the time since then. And, you know, now I really feel familiar and comfortable with you. So, you know, it, it is taking a necessarily limited relationship that you have with someone through the internet into real life. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's almost like that bridge. Yep. And then uh, for the second part of it, it's for the, the listeners. I think as a therapist, you know, people can hear what I'm about. Like, I think about like being how I am in my therapy sessions in my podcast interviews. It's, mm. it's listening and talking and, you know, just trying to bring my authentic self and what that offers. Um, and then people become more familiar with who you are in that way, too, if they're interested in working with you as a therapist. And for those who do coaching and can do it, you know, throughout the country, you know, it really opens up who can find you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think to like put some of this in context. So uh, there, so like my podcast is now listened to in 50 countries, is listened to in every continent except Antarctica. <laughs> which is crazy, right? Like a podcast that I'm creating in a home office in my house in Philadelphia. Right. It is crazy. Um, and your podcast has a really huge reach. I mean, in that 14 months, it's grown. It's very popular. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, and I think there's like a lesson that I learned in all of this, which is, I think if you come from the perspective of wanting to serve and wanting to give back and coming from that place, I think all of the other stuff will work itself out, you know, whether it's the the financial aspect, you know, I just, uh, you know, I, this is the first month that I'm, I've waited and waited, probably waited a little too long, but this is the first month I'm have a, spo a podcast sponsor, you know, mm -hmm. and like I was so worried initially about whether this podcast was going to do anything, you know, but I think, yeah, just coming from a place of wanting to give, you know, things I think work out, you know, and I think as long as you, I think especially, I think sometimes as business owners, we can get trapped into like chasing the shiny object or trying to make that quick buck. But that for me, like, it's not worth it if it comes at the, at the um, point of hurting someone else, if that makes sense. Right, right. Or being untruthful or any of those things. Somehow giving up your integrity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Agreed. And that's the thing with the podcast is you control that. It's your thing. Yeah, absolutely. So how, what can you tell us about how podcasting can help therapists in private practice? Yeah, I mean, that is a, a great question and probably could spend an hour on this, but <laughs> I'll try to give you the, the short version. So I think as a cl clinician, I think it can off, they can help in a couple of different ways. One, I think um, there's some stats probably that are helpful. Uh, number one is uh, there's about 2.3 billion smartphones in 2016. That number is supposed to skyrocket to about 6.2 billion, I think, by 2020 in about four years. And so everybody basically, it sound, and that's, I think, is going to be about 70% of the world's population by 2020 is going to have a smartphone. So everybody's on a smartphone, um, has access to a podcast. As a clinician, this means that you have a reach that is tremendous. I think especially for clinicians that feel like they're at a point in their private practice where they want to start scaling their practice. So what, what, again, when I mean scaling, I mean uh, the stop trading time for money kind of idea. So they want to create some other products. They want to maybe expand into speaking. They want to become more of an influencer and authority in a certain area. Um, I think those are great opportunities. Like, for example, um, we have a, you know, a friend that's in the health gastros. Her name is Jackie Flynn, right? She's a um, 
play therapist and she has a podcast called Parenting in the Rain. And she wants to start expanding into consulting and coaching. And she also wants to expand into courses. And so she's created this amazing podcast that's a great resource for parents, you know, that want to that want to be uh, that want to hear from other experts and want to hear from other parents about what's working, you know, and like I think of Robert, like Robert Cox is another person, right? He's got his passion is in the intersection of mindfulness and recovery, right? Mm -hmm. And so he's created this amazing podcast called Mindful Recovery, which basically incorporates those two pieces. Um, I believe it was Robert. So he he has this podcast. It's been, I think, about eight weeks, right? Eight or nine weeks, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, he he said that, you know, I remember he posted, he said that somebody heard his podcast uh, and it's in the last couple of weeks, it's ended up with a couple of contracts, like a couple of big contracts, right? Like connections with some big people in his state. He's also landed a speaking, a paid speaking gig. Um, which is just, it's amazing. And all the, all these people like heard him through a podcast. Yeah. Um, and only nine weeks. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, and I don't know, like, I feel like podcasting is so young right now. Uh, it has grown uh, every year since 2012. I, f I don't remember the numbers offhand, but I think it was like 1.2 billion, something like that in um, 2012. This past year, it's somewhere between, 3.9 and 4.1 billion total downloads per year. And that rate is supposed to be increasing at least into the next decade. So, wow. yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just as a clinician, I think the easiest thing is that it allows you to expand your voice, especially if you have a passion. I think all of us as clinicians, we have a passion for something, right? Yeah, clinical. And if you want to connect with others who are in that similar space and also become an authority and really think about um, other ways of creating income. I think podcasting is that that backbone, that avenue that can allow that. It's pretty incredible to even imagine. And I think, I know for me, um, the way I got into podcasting, it's so silly, but um, a consultant I was working with um, said, I can see you doing a podcast. And I was like, oh, really? Like, hmm. Okay, you know, and <laughs> that's pretty much how I decided to do it. And I remember saying, well, hmm, what would I talk about? And then I was like, oh, well, I guess I could just talk about the same kinds of things I talk about in my practice. And I think that's one of the things who clini that clinicians who are listening to this might be thinking is, well, what would I make a podcast about? Right. I mean, we're not talking about a psychologist making a cooking podcast. We're talking about something that relates to our clinical work, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think we haven't we haven't touched on this yet, but you know, the way podcasts are set up right now is let's say that, you know, you're we can use um Jackie as an example. So she's a parenting she's a play therapist, parenting expert. Uh she has created this podcast. The thing with podcasts is that they're evergreen, meaning that it's free content that stays live forever. So people are discovering your podcast all the time, which is if you think about any other avenue, like in traditionally when you pay for any kind of advertising, you pay for the advertising and the slot is done, right? After that, after the, the advertising time is over, uh, your ad gets removed. With podcasting, it's kind of more evergreen, and it just uh, people find your podcast over time, uh, and then you know even at the end of like one of the things I always encourage my healthcasters to do is you uh, mention your website at the end of your podcast, right? Because when you have millions, if not billions, of people that are listening to podcasts, right, it's a great way to drive traffic back to your website and for f people to connect with you. And I think there's something very powerful about just hearing our voice, right? The the power of voice. I think there's a sense of trust that gets built when when someone hears our voice over and over again. True. Very, very true. And that's what, you know, when you listen to podcasts, whatever they're about, it's like, oh, yeah, my this person I have begun to trust is telling me more stuff that I want to learn about. And it's it's different from reading it or, you know. I don't know. It's it's like watching a video, but 
it's more flexible. You can listen to it while you're walking down the street and you don't have to be holding the phone and staring at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's, and that's a good point. So podcasts take, like fill this unique space. So you can listen to a podcast um, on your phone while you're just like completely undivided and just listening to the podcast. You can take notes and all that stuff, but podcasts also fill this space that you don't have, you don't have to give up something to listen to a podcast. So you can, work out and listen to a podcast. You can cook a meal and listen to a podcast. You can be on a hike and listen to a podcast, which is very unique. I mean, I listen to podcasts all the time on commutes. Yeah, I think a lot of people listen in in the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think like, so another interesting stat is they say by 2020, uh, about 70% of the cars that are going to be made in the U.S. will have the ability to connect to the internet, right? So you have all these smartphones plus the ability to connect to the internet. It only makes sense that essentially radio will now be streamed through your smartphone into your car, right? And I I mean, just being in this space now, it, it feels like what we know as traditional radio is slowly getting replaced by kind of by podcast because it's on demand, meaning that you can listen whenever you want, uh, but it also lets you pick and select what you want to listen to. Right, because since you mentioned it's evergreen, um, if I'm listening to, I only listen to the radio one place, and that's when I'm driving somewhere. And um, my commute from my house to my office is blessedly only eight minutes. So (laughs) in the mornings, (laughs) yeah, so in the mornings, I hear eight minutes of my favorite radio morning show, but it's on from like 6am till 11. And I miss everything else they talk about. And there's nowhere for me to go back and listen to it. So, Mm. you know, if it were a podcast, I could just pause it right there, come back to it when I get back in the car, you know, And like you said, I could be listening to a podcast that someone put out five years ago. The content's new to me, and they're talking about their website at the end. I'm going to go on their website if I want more information. And and so that's a great way for us as therapists to get traffic to our websites. You know, we talk a lot about blogging to bring traffic to our websites, but this is another way to bring traffic. And, And the people who are coming are people who really are interested in what you're talking about. Yeah. And that's, that's a, like a, it's a subtle thing you said, but it's very powerful because it's warm traffic, right? It's people that already know, like, and trust you and that are coming to your website to learn about more content. And there's like all sorts of interesting, like research now coming out with podcasts. So, um, you know, I was like looking at this one study that they basically interviewed, uh, I think almost 168,000 500 podcast listeners and they found that 61 percent of those people are likely to buy a product or a service that they heard on a podcast which i think speaks to that that power of voice and the trust that people build with a a podcast host yeah it's pretty amazing 61 percent i mean you don't hear those kind of stats like that's crazy right like i don't i don't know what the comparable stats are but i cannot imagine it's that high in any other medium. Yeah, it's really interesting. And I think it's, you know, like what you've said about how it's really growing. It used to be um, a certain generation. The younger people were the ones listening to podcasts, but I'm in my 40s and I'm starting to be crazy for listening to podcasts. I mean, I just can't get enough (laughs) because there are so many different subjects. And, you know, I mean, it can be comedy, it can be self-help, it can be you know, medical stuff. Um, it's just, it's like unlimited. Yeah. And I think so many of us, right, in the field, we're like natural learners and podcasts completely cater to that because you literally, for example, you go into iTunes, right? You search for whatever topic you want. You get a bunch of podcasts that pull up and there it's like now you can listen to and, you know, listen to your heart's content about that particular topic. Right. But I think, you know, with so many people listening, really the number of podcasts that are out there, it's so new. It's like, 
you could, you know how you binge watch and like you binge watch everything that's on Netflix and then you're like, I've seen everything. There's nothing. They need to come put some new stuff on here. So that's how it is, I think, with the podcast is that, you know, people will listen to all the episodes of all the podcasts that are on the subject they're interested in and they still want more. So it's not like if you're thinking about making a podcast, oh, well, there's already one about that subject. Absolutely. And I think when you have a host, right, that's your own unique voice. Um, and I think that's a factor that plays into it as well. There's another really interesting stat I was looking at. So there's something like 152 million blogs. And I think a blog is basically created every seven seconds. And there's about, I think, 220 or 250,000 podcasts. Now, that seems like a huge number. But when you compare it to the fact of there are 2 billion plus phones, right? Mm -hmm. You're not even hitting like 10, 10 to, you're only hitting about 10 to 12% of the growth potential of podcasts, which is why I think that that potential is really high. And why I think if it is something that you're thinking about, it's good to jump in sooner than later, because I mean, you're starting to see it, you know, some of the, the bigger companies are definitely investing the marketing dollars into this space. And, you know, I think it, it's so early in the game. And I think where regular folks like you and I can can create these podcasts and reach such a global audience like and it's it's such a new medium and i think it allows for that yeah so do you have any tips for therapists who are thinking about like what could i create how would i what what would be the subject that i would want to do a podcast about yeah i absolutely have some tips so the the first thing i always do is i think about I encourage folks to just write down things that they're passionate about. It can be both in the clinical setting and outside of the clinical setting. So just like one kind of like business thing I've learned is sometimes the best podcasts cross platforms. So for example, um, you know, with mine, it's a combination of uh, psychology, business, marketing, you know, so it's crossing that sort of platform. So take a moment just to write down the things that you're passionate about. Uh, I'm a big fan of trying to like, uh, f so once you've written down some things that you feel passionate about, I'm just a big fan of going and, and researching to see if there's enough demand for that particular topic, right? So um, the couple of places that you can check to see is if you just log on Facebook, right? Facebook is... Uh, I read some stat. Facebook is now, if it were, if Facebook were a country, it would be the largest country in the world. There's like over 2 billion people on Facebook now. Wow. Uh, and so Facebook is starting to really emphasize groups, Facebook groups. So if you go on Facebook and do that, you know, the very, the top, the search bar, um, search whatever, whatever word that you wrote down, you know, whether it's um, addictions or mindfulness or, um, maternal mental health, whatever it is, right? And see the groups that pop up because those are potential listeners. And if you're noticing a lot of groups that pop up, those are definitely like, that's definitely a, a topic that could be viable. Um, I also like to look on things like, um, I like to see what's out there in terms of books, you know, so I'll look on Amazon for some of those same topics. Um, and I think doing that, um, looking in both existing communities as well as what's out there. And then I also like to just look at who are the people that are the, the big influencers currently in that niche. You know, I think those are people to have potentially on your podcast. Uh, those are also people that you can build relationships with. Uh, we were talking about this earlier, but reaching out to these people and, and if they come on your podcast, you get to build a relationship with them and you never know where that relationship will go. You know, um, I, I like this. I like the perfect example for this. Like Michael Formica, who's a, a therapist in town, he and I had never met before, but um, he's also a therapist. He's also a regular um, writer for both Psychology Today and the Huffington Post. I interviewed him on blog on um, blogging. Uh, and how a clinician can blog to effectively like drive website traffic and things like that. During that hour, I mean, we just formed this great connection and I'll, and at the end of it, he was like, Melvin, you know, I loved this conversation. Can I write a blog post uh, about your podcast on psychology today? And I was like, uh, 
sure. <laughs> no <laughs> brainer. Like, yeah, right? Like I I was like, is this like, wow, this is crazy. And that's been the amazing thing. Like I've gotten to build friendships with people that I would have never connected with, you know, like my, uh, Michael, we had dinner, Michael, Corey Bank. Um, he's another friend that I connected with, on, um, you know, through the podcast. You know, we've had dinner a couple of times. We're going to be hopefully hanging out here in uh, in um, and doing a mastermind on a day together. I mean, it's just like wow. neat things that, you know, opportunities that have come up because of a little podcast, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's what we do as therapists, right? Mm -hmm. Build relationship, connect, talk, listen. <laughs> well, and I think that's the piece, right? Like, I think the, the piece that intimidates a lot of us and intimidated me is, and I kind of like the tech stuff, so, but it's that technology piece, right? Like, how do you overcome that? And I think once you figure that out, it's really not bad. But the other bigger piece is learning to ask good questions, building trust and rapport, being an authority, being able to speak clearly on a topic. All of those things come either come naturally to us or through our training, we've honed those. And I think so for us, especially in the mental health field, um, podcasts cater to so many of our strengths. I agree. And not everyone necessarily wants to have an interview format podcast, but I think it's a great way to teach and, you know, do what you would do if you were speaking to an auditorium full of people. But in, you know, whatever topics you want to cover on your terms, and, you know, in the length of time that you'd like to do it in, it's you can reach so many people. Yeah. And that, and, and you bring up a good point, which is that your podcast episodes don't need to be like 45 minutes or an hour long. Like you can totally cater it to the time that you have. I like to use a, a like a one to four ratio, meaning that, you know, I, if you think of like, I ask folks to like, think about how much time they would have per week to dedicate to podcasting. If you only have an hour, that's okay. So it just means that, um, you probably are going to have about a 10 minute episode. The That's the one part. The four is um, editing the episode, uploading it. You know, if you're going to write show notes, meaning like a summary of what that episode is. And then if you're going to create any kind of like artwork that's associated with that episode, um, which by the way, you can use a free program called Canva to do that. Um, and so that's it. Like you can, and those shorter episodes do really well because Folks want quick tips and quick solutions, but the the magical thing is, right, every time you have one of those episodes, uh, you're building trust with someone. Yeah, I've seen that some people do have either daily or weekly podcasts that are like 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the quick, quick tip kind of podcast. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be this really laborious thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, even like, I don't know, I'm just like thinking, I keep like thinking about, I don't know, parenting, but I, so even if you wanted to create a short form podcast, right, it would maybe all you do is you share a parenting tip a week, right? And how that might apply or something like that. Yeah. So that would be such a simple way for a therapist who specializes in parenting or a parenting coach to just, you know, I mean, you could make a bulleted list of these, you know, of a 100 little parenting tips you wanted to share and then spend what an hour or two recording all of them in little snippets and you've got your content. I mean, yep. but another thing that I think is really interesting, and I keep going back to this evergreen point, but someone we both know um, has a podcast that she hasn't done any new episodes in over a year, mm. and she still gets six to eight thousand downloads per month of that, and it's not even being added to currently that's crazy yeah i mean that's that's just something I never would have thought possible i because one thing that I think was a bit of a barrier for me with podcasting is that I was afraid I wouldn't have the time to continue adding content and that it wouldn't seem professional if I didn't do it regularly. Mm -hmm. 
And I think it is important to do it regularly. So people, because they want more and you want to have more to keep them coming back, but it doesn't, it never stops. So, you know, even if you did take a break and some people do their podcasts in seasons, um, you know, the, the information is still sitting there and new people are discovering it constantly. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's such a cool concept, right? It's like advertising that just keeps giving in a way. Yeah. Okay. So did you have any other, cause I sort of went in a different direction, but did you have any other tips you wanted to give to therapists who are thinking about this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, the other like kind of big news things are, so I, you know, Apple has always been the big player in the podcasting space. So if you're an Apple user, um, you have a app on your phone called Podcasts. It's purple, um, at least of this rec- at this time of this recording, and that's the way that you can connect and access podcasts. Uh, what's really what's been crazy in the past couple of months are a bunch of big companies have now jumped into the podcasting space. Google, which um, supplies a majority of the Android phones. Uh, which is a little known fact is there's actually more Android users worldwide than there are Apple users. So there's something like 1.4 billion um, Android users. Um, And I think around like 600 to 800 million um, Apple users. But and uh, Google just jumped into the podcasting space. And actually two days ago, their uh, podcast. So uh, Google Play, which is how they're distributing podcasts, that officially became live. So essentially, we've now almost doubled, or at least it's made uh, doubled the existing podcast audience, and it's made it much easier for Android users to now access podcasts. And there's just a bunch of other stuff that's happened, like Pandora, which is the music streaming platform. Um, you know, the the big podcast Serial, they're actually supporting. So Serial is only being broadcast on Pandora 1 this year, which means that Pandora is jumping into the space as well. Um, the uh, the wow. other, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Like there's um, Spotify, the other music streaming platform, they are jumping into the podcasting space. Uh, I just saw some news that Amazon is um, their Audible, you know, their ebook or their uh, audio, audiobook platform. Their, it seems like their long-term vision is to turn it more into an audio platform. And so some of these NPR podcasts are starting to be available on Audible, which means that there's a pretty good chance it's only a matter of time before Amazon jumps into the space as well. Wow. Who would think? And I love how you always know all the latest stuff about podcasting. That makes it really, you know, that's one of the great things that you have to offer is you keep us, the people who are in your podcasting group and course, totally apprised on all this new stuff so we don't have to keep up with it. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's it. (laughs) I mean, I I like geeking out on this stuff, so I don't mind. But, you know, I think if you're going to do a podcast, you just I just want you guys to focus on doing your podcast, you know, not worried about what's going on in the world of podcasting. I can give you guys that content. Yeah, I appreciate that. So um, I think it's important for you to tell about how what you offer that can help people who are thinking about developing a podcast. Yeah, so I have a ton of free content out there. Um, the the probably the best one to start is I have a complete guide to launching your podcast, which is a step-by-step tutorial. There's no like opt-in or nothing like that. It's just um, lots of helpful information, lots of stats, step-by-step guides, got videos, it's got infographic, it's got a bunch of stuff Um, that, you know, that'll take you definitely from, that'll get you to a point where you can launch your podcast. So um, I can, you know, definitely share that uh, in the show notes, but you can find it at sellingthecouch.com forward slash podcasting tutorial, all um, lowercase letters. Um, I also have, you know, I do one-on-one consulting, uh, for podcasts. So this is a great option. If you just have an idea, uh, with a podcast, but you're not sure where to go with it, um, whether you're not sure of kind of the monetization and the future growth potential, uh, I can basically, you know, help you and guide you through that. And we can do some research together. Um, I can also, you know, I also help out if, you're at just at you've maybe already launched a podcast and you're just feeling stuck and you want to take it to that next level, but not sure how. 
Um, the Healthcasters is, is kind of the, you know, a community that I don't know that I fully anticipated creating when I created my own podcast. Part of it just came out of a need. Actually, a huge part just came out of a need. Um, a bunch of folks started reaching out, asking for help in launching a podcast. And I so I thought, you know, rather than I could serve a lot more people if I just share everything that I've learned about podcasting and that I'm learning, uh, put it into um, easy, like a digestible form with step-by-step videos, with worksheets, with all of the templates that I use so no one has to reinvent the wheel. I mean, these are things that are working. Anytime I change stuff, I for my podcast, I update it in the course. Um, and so the Healthcasters is basically, you know, it's now become actually the first community for health, wellness, and fitness podcasters. So uh, I wanted to create this community where, you know, those of us who are passionate about those topics uh, pertaining to health, wellness, and fitness, we could um, do this in community. We could learn from each other. We could grow together. Uh, and the community's, you know, starting to really take off. And I'm excited by that. And it's it's a really good energy. So um, the the podcasting tutorial, um, at the very end of it, there's a discount to the health casters. So mm. um, that's kind of a, a secret Easter egg. So <laughs> yeah, jump on that people. Yeah, so and uh, I'm I'm excited. Like I'm excited to see where podcasting is going for my own podcast, you know, and uh, I'm excited to see where the health casters are going. I, I just the the potential is enormous, and I think we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg, you know. And um, you know, this is actually, and an, an, I don't know if this would kind of put it more into tangible form, but uh, right now, here in the last couple of months, uh, my income made online is more than my in office income. Oh my gosh, that's and, huge! Yeah, and I think, and that's why, I like, and I don't like to talk about that because mainly it's just my not my personality but like i it's i mean it's just living proof that this podcasting thing is taking off there's i think if you launch it and and grow it successfully you know um there's a lot of potential there and that's so that tutorial will definitely get you to the place where you can launch a podcast the healthcasters will teach you how to grow and monetize it successfully and and do it in community well, thank you for sharing those resources. And because you're very humble and won't say it, I will say that, uh, first of all, you've taught me everything that I know about podcasting. And I really couldn't have done it without you. So thank you for that. <laughs> and secondly, that um, I'm in Healthcasters, and I have personally witnessed new people join Healthcasters, follow Melvin's instructions step by step, and literally, when they launch their podcasts, first of all, I'll say disclaimer, I didn't do Healthcasters before launching mine. And those people who did, um, their podcasts were, you know, starting out with a huge following and, you know, showing up in new and noteworthy ranking super high in iTunes and, I was like, wow, what did I do wrong? Because mine is not taking off like this. Let me go back <laughs> and join the Healthcasters and figure out where I went wrong and made some changes. And it's been uh, great. Your help. podcast is doing really well. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's been a great help to making the reach expand much more than when I first pictured myself kind of talking to myself in the closet, you know, hoping that someone would listen. Um now it's reaching many more people. And that is what we want is as therapists, we're trying to help people and we want to share information that's going to be of service, like you mentioned before. So there's no shame in having your podcast do really well and be able to reach more and more people because you're helping more people that way. Yeah. And I think that's the piece of why we do what we do, right? Uh, I know that we talked a lot about like stats and technical information, but uh, podcasting gives you this avenue where you can take passion and just help a world that's in need. And I think that's why like I do the podcast and I know that's why you do the podcast. Uh, it makes me like emotional, like talking about it, but I mean, that's the core of it, you know? Uh, exactly. Exactly. It is emotional. It's like, it's a special gift to be able to do it. Yeah. I mean, I just like, I think of like, 
you know, I'll get like emails and I'll get like, you know, Facebook messages. Like, I mean, it's like people like say the nicest things about how like a podcast has like changed their life and their career, you know, I would have never anticipated that, you know, when I first started. And it's just, it's such a great feeling to be able to give back in, in that way, you know? Yeah. And it's all free content. Right. So that's a win-win all around. You you use what you're doing to help other people grow their practices. When we as therapists grow our practices, we're able to serve more people one by one or by couples or families. And through podcasting, you know, some of the people I've interviewed um, – talking about certain subjects i'm i'm actually hearing a lot of feedback about certain interviews where people are saying i heard this and oh my gosh i had no idea about that and now Mm. i understand so much about myself and i'm ready to work with a therapist who understands that too and you know i mean how powerful is that yeah i mean right and and i mean with podcasts we're literally in the ears of folks and there's something that happens like magical that happens when people hear our voice i agree i'm so glad that you were willing to and able to take the time to be on this special practice building episode today on therapy chat melvin thank you so much for being here thank you so much for having me laura i'm just truly honored and uh like i said i I love being on the uh the other side of it it's kind of fun (laughs) So for everyone, all of Melvin's resources that he mentioned will be listed in the show notes. And um, you'll know how you can contact him. Also, Melvin, do you want to just share your general website? Yeah, sure. Um, You can find information about me at sellingthecouch.com. So it's all lowercase. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks again for listening to Therapy Chat. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Melvin Varghese, PhD of Selling the Couch podcast. Be sure to check the show notes so you can find all the resources that Melvin mentioned in our interview listed there. And you can check out his awesome podcasting tutorial and his Healthcasters course. And as always, please visit iTunes to leave a rating and review. Subscribe so you can receive all the latest episodes as soon as they come out. Thank you for listening to the Therapy Chat Podcast with Laura Reagan, LCSWC. For more information, visit Laura's website at www.lauraregan.lcswc.com.